absolutely was probably a little too obsessed with Power Rangers. Even my mom loved it with me, and you were my mom's favorite. Really? Absolutely, yes. She would always sit there, and this is a true story, she'd always sit there and go, that blue Power Ranger is so sexy. I'm not <laughs> even kidding. I'm not even kidding. Well, I will say Billy had the most girlfriends on the TV show. So. <laughs> He got around. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. All right. Like I said, this is for all of you guys. This is a Q and A. The Q stands for question. So I want to make sure that we get to all the questions as fast as possible. Get to everybody's questions. So let's go ahead and open it up to the audience. So who has a question for David? Are we just? Are they just screaming out, or can we get a mic? They're, they're getting a, They're getting the Q and A mic, but I'll run back there and give them a mic. Do we not? There's a bar. That's is there? I'm like, this yeah, is the weirdest chair I've ever sat in. <laughs> All right, I'm coming back here to you. Thank you. <laughs> did, you did you originally intend to be the Blue Ranger? Uh, did I originally intend to be the Blue Ranger? Well, when we first auditioned for the show, uh, we didn't really understand. They didn't tell us what colors were going to be what. We were just sort of auditioning for the characters. And I originally auditioned for the role of Victor, which went on to be the Red Ranger. And they changed Victor's name to Jason, and that's why we have Jason on the show. So, in a roundabout way, no, I didn't originally intend to be the Blue Ranger. But uh, I ended up that way, and I have no issues with it. So, does that answer your question? Okay. Was there ever a different color that you wanted to be at some point? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, uh, blue, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be a color of mine, and uh, I don't know. I, I like the color blue. I always did, even before I was the Blue Ranger. So, looks good with me. It fits you well. Yeah, thank you. All right, yeah. who else had a question over here? Yes. Uh, hello, my name is Mike, and um, I was just wondering uh, after you uh, left during uh, Zio and uh, went into the, with the uh, Aquatar Rangers, uh, what was the hardest part about leaving the show? Well, Mike, uh, it's a really complicated story. Uh, I wasn't really in that final episode uh, where I was on another planet and all that stuff. They just used stock footage of me and had somebody else do my voice and turned me old. So I've never really watched that episode, so I can't really answer it. Um, but I like the way that my character left, and I think it was perfect for Billy uh, and his character development. Huh. Does that kind of answer your question? Uh, kind of. Um, I was more along the lines of, line, along the lines of um, transitioning out of being in such a, such a uh, popular show and such a high-rated show and trying to transition to other roles or just in, back into uh, like a regular life and not being in power, uh, such, a, oh. such, a, such a huge, shit, huge, huge oh. thing. I'm sorry, that went right over my head. Oh, no, you're <laughs> literally, I probably should have looked at better. Uh, what was it like? I mean, so, you know, when you get on a TV show, I can only speak for me, uh, when, you know, being on Power Rangers was such a huge success around the world, not just in the United States. So I would go to England and get recognized. We were in Australia, we'd walk down the street and get recognized. So, you know, it's kind of like this weird bubble that you start living in. And, um, you know, for a while, uh, I would be out in the world and still get recognized, and then it kind of drifted away. But I was going, uh, going through so much personally myself with struggling with my sexuality and uh, things that were going on in my life. And, uh, you know, I had to get help for that. So kind of stepped away from Hollywood for quite a while um, to get my head together. And I moved to Mexico for a year to do that. Um, so, and then I came back and just started working behind the scenes in television. As uh, I didn't start off as a producer, but I got uh, promoted to a producer rather quickly and worked on several movies of the week and reality shows and all that kind of stuff. Does that sort of answer your question? Or oh, yeah, still not there. I know, you're, you're perfect right on. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm 100%. I think so. Uh, my name is Steven. And uh, was it hard moving around in the costumes? Like the outfit, was it uncomfortable? Well, first of all, Steven, you're wearing a Ninja Turtle shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so how dare you stand up at a Power Rangers <laughs> and ask a question about moving around in a costume. Uh, no, I mean, on the TV show, the costumes were very breathable. We have a perfect example right in front of you in two rows. You can really move in them. The only thing that was uncomfortable was the helmet. Uh, but in the movie, if you saw Power Rangers the movie in 1995, those... <laughs> I guess you guys like that movie. Yeah. Uh, that's good. 
Of a likable. Sorry, Cisco and Ebert. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Cisco and Ebert didn't like it. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, those suits, uh, for the guys, they weighed around 35 to 50 pounds. And for the girls, they were right around 25 to 30, 35 pounds, somewhere in there. So we had those on all day. Uh, and very uncomfortable, very hard to move in. When we did move, they would fall apart. So in between takes, they would glue the suits <laughs> back together while we were wearing them, that kind of stuff. So, but they looked amazing on screen. So, and I, I still think those suits hold up better today on screen, the way that they look, than any of these CGI suits that we really see. I really like our suits. Just, I'm partial, that's all. I could be wrong. But you're right, so. Yeah, well, yeah. Good question, <laughs> Somebody young, right? <laughs> Can't be somebody my age. No. No. Do it. Somebody yells that out real quick. No. Uh, I don't know. I, I would have to think about that. That's a really good question. Do you have a suggestion for me? See? Now you know how I feel. Um, I don't know. I have to think about that. It'll, maybe by the end of this panel, I'll, it'll click into my head. What about maybe Jesse Eisenberg? No. Sure. No? no? He's too old. Is he? Well, you, have an eight, you have an age today, though. Literally. That, that's look a lie. No. <laughs> <laughs> look, at, look at him. You still look very, very useful. Well, thank you. I think, I think your mom is kind of trickling into you there. So. <laughs> I mean, maybe just a lie. <laughs> hey, Kim. Oh. oh. Easy, Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say, Leo. Anyway. Uh, what's your, any favorite memories whatsoever of, uh, the original Yellow Ranger, Twee Trang? Well, I mean, I have a lot of memories of Twee. Uh, I think it's obviously really unfortunate that she's no longer with us. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, she was so beautiful. And I, I've said this quite a few times, like, when I look back at pictures now, all these years later, and I look at the original cast, I think, wow, they were, all my, <laughs> all these people were such good-looking people, and, uh, I just took it for granted because they're like my brothers and sisters. And so Twee was like my sister and I just really never realized how stunningly beautiful she really was. And like I go back and I see pictures of her and I'm like, wow, she was so pretty. But I, I just remember uh, she had an amazing laugh uh, and she would always giggle. And uh, she loved to, I don't quite understand this one, but she would be in the makeup room and she would always be uh, spraying hairspray on her bangs. So it's real important that the bangs always stayed where they were. So I just remember, shh, <laughs> never quite get it. And then she taught me about, uh, I'm just gonna call it rice paper. I don't know if that's really what it was, but she, I guess I was really, I had an oily face. I didn't know I did, but Twee let me know. And she, she would give me these little rice paper things to blot my forehead with so that I didn't look so shiny. So those are some of the things I remember about her, but she was really sweet. Super nice girl, uh, very talented in so many ways that we didn't really get to see because um, her life was cut short, unfortunately. But yeah. amazing, amazing woman. So thank you for thank you for asking for that because you know, I, I, I appreciate you asking for that because I think so often for whatever reason uh, people just kind of pass over her, and it's a little frustrating when I see people sign on her picture. Uh, I don't understand it sometimes, so it's, it's a little weird. So I appreciate when it, it, whenever anybody brings up Twee, it makes me very happy. As long as, as, long as people remember her, yep. she'll, she's never truly gone. You're absolutely right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Matt. Uh, uh, how do you feel about the new Power Rangers movie, the one that came out a couple years ago? I, it was good, but I don't know. Like, do you have any, do you have any feelings on it, or do you oh. like it, not like it? I mean, overall, I, I liked it. I thought they did a good job. I uh, like the characters overall. I thought R.J. Kyler, who played Billy, did such a phenomenal job. Sorry, a more phenomenal job. <laughs> <laughs> like he, he really killed it, and I, I like that they uh, put Billy on the spectrum. Yes! Um, yes, exactly. I just thought that spoke to so many people these days, and... Um, I mean, there were things that I didn't necessarily like. I thought they could have done better. Uh, when they say it's morphin' time, I thought that was a massive failure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, 
didn't understand that choice. Did they not watch the TV show? Did they not do their research? Not the actors, the director and the writers. Like, you know, they really need to say it's morphin' time. I mean, Austin and St. John really set the bar, and you should always try to live to that bar. And, um, you know, poor Dacre, he was just like, oh, it's morphin' time. It just didn't feel powerful to me. So that, they didn't play the theme song uh, long enough. It's like they teased us with the theme song, they started it, and then it's like they just cut it. And I was like, wait, what happened? So that kind of sucked. And you didn't get to see the Zords very well. And they all had their own little pod instead of being in a cockpit together. So that was weird. So now I'm getting into all the negatives. So, <laughs> uh, I sound like a really negative person. And I'm not. I really am not. But, you know, again, overall, I thought they did a great job. Uh, Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme, yes. Krispy Kreme. Yes, 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 yes. I just want to make sure that we hear the, uh, you know, we know who put a lot of money into the film, Krispy Kreme. Uh, and make sure that we're just promoting Krispy Kreme at every Krispy Kreme turn we can. Hi. Hi, nice shirt. Thank you. Affirmative, yes. My name's Nolly. It's so good to see you. Um, first of all, I wanted to say that you could totally still play Billy, like, right now. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just, I just need a pair of overalls. Yeah. <laughs> Although, I mean, you're kind of dressed for the part now. Too. Well, kind of, yeah. yeah. I'm um, partial to blue, that's all. Good color. Looks Thank good you. on you. Um, so you once answered one of my questions in a live stream, and you said that after he was on Aquatar and stuff, that Billy was kind of like a Captain Kirk. So I gotta ask the question, could you talk about what your kind of view is about where Billy would be today and kind of after Avatar? Yeah, you really wanna know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, for me, I would just think that he spent some time on Aquatar, or Aquatar, Aquatar, uh, <laughs> tomato, tomato. Uh, but I don't, I don't think he ended up marrying anybody from Aquatar. I don't believe he had children with anybody from Aquatar, but I do believe he left there and sort of started, started to explore the galaxy. Uh, and obviously, I would assume that he's some kind of a commander or a captain of a ship uh, that travels around the universe. But I do believe he did, end up, he did end up having two children, a boy and a girl. He's no longer married. Uh, I don't know if they ever got married, but they had children together. But uh, it didn't work out. And uh, both of his children are very rebellious. So that's kind of where I see him. But uh, I definitely think he'll be, I don't think he's been back to Earth either. Oh, wow. I don't think he's made it back yet. So uh, if Billy was ever to reprise a role, uh, or if I was ever to reprise Billy, uh, I would want that to be his first time back to Earth. Like, that's how it maybe would open up. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. Like, a while ago, I did write a reunion script <clears throat> of the original cast, and it take. I, I don't want to give it away. It's fine. Keep going. Thank you. I won't Thank give it away. You. You're welcome. <laughs> so, uh, we'll see. Do you think it'll ever see the light of day? I don't know. Hopefully. I have to beg a lot of people, but uh, it might. Hi. Hi, this is Jillian. Hi, Jillian. Um, watched you ever since the show first came out. Um, my biggest question I have is being the first nerd scientific person on top of being who you are in real life. How do you feel about people who look up to you? in their youth and still kind of try to be that kind of charismatic person that does it well in their career? Well, that's a very nice question to be asked. Thank you. Uh, obviously, it's extremely humbling, and uh, my heart uh, explodes every day. Uh, you guys are all amazing people, and uh, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being a fan of Power Rangers. It obviously means the world to me. It means the world to my co-stars. Uh, we wouldn't be who we are without you guys. And so it's, it's really uh, an honor to play characters that had such an amazing impact on so many people's lives. And when we started the show, none of us could ever have dreamed or thought that these characters would have the impact. And I think for most of us, it's still sort of like a surreal experience that here we are all these years later and we travel around the world and we get to go to Comic Cons and we get to meet you guys and you say, hey, I became a scientist because of Billy, or I became a doctor because of Billy, or I got into martial arts because of Jason or Tommy, or I'm a gymnast because of Kimberly, all those things. Uh, or I just wanted to be a better person. Um, I looked up to you guys and you guys helped me you know, pick the right path. 
Um, a lot of, we've heard a lot of stories about kids who came, came from broken homes where they didn't really have a good family life and Power Rangers was like their one saving grace. Like they, could, they just wanted to get home and watch Power Rangers and it made them so happy and it helped them forget everything that was going on around them. So to be part of something like that is just really an honor. And um, you know, as time goes on and you guys are adults now and some of you understand the struggles that I went through uh, when I was in my early 20s and um, dealing with everything that I dealt with and you know, me coming out as a gay person has helped other people come out and, uh, or be more accepting of their friends or their brothers or their sisters. Um, you know, that's an honor as well for me. So, you know, it's just, uh, I mean, I, I never get tired <laughs> of all the love that I, I get. So, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah? Thank you. Out of all the seasons that you were in, from Mighty Morphin you know, to Zia, which one was your favorite? Uh, well, I'd probably have to say season number one, um, just because the cast, the original cast, we had such amazing chemistry together, and we went through so much together. Um, I mean, Austin, Walter, Amy Jo, and myself all went through the audition process together. So, uh, you know, we had this chemistry even from the beginning. And then when we went to series and Twee and Jason Frank came in, uh, they just really added to that chemistry. So we had so much fun in the first two seasons uh, getting to, to be together, uh, and those will always have the most impactful memories for me. Um, and so I would just say season one was by far my favorite. Uh, hey guys, I'm Mark. Good. Hey, um, my question is on the show, y'all went through powers a number of times. Y'all kept switching stuff. Did Zordon ever truly get upset that y'all broke his stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. I mean, There's like, more stuff, man, you know. He ain't never like cuss y'all out all screen. I can't, I can't really divulge what goes on behind the scenes with Zordon. Uh, I don't think he'd really like it. But he does have a bit of a temper at times. <laughs> at a time and so everything that would take place in the command center in those four episodes we would film and then we just keep rotating sets for those four episodes and then go out on location so we were often staggered like you said some of us would be filming and some of us wouldn't so there was never a time I can think of in the morning that we would have time to do something like that uh, and our call times are usually like at 4 4 30 in the morning and you just go, you go right to the first set and you do a rehearsal and you go back to makeup and wardrobe and then you're back on the set doing that. But uh, me as an actor, uh, just for me, for me, I am very lucky to have played Billy because he was a character. He was very different from who I was. So for me, it was like such an honor to get to play a character that was smart because he made me smart. I didn't know what I was saying half the time I was saying it. I had to look the words up in the dictionary uh, and then try to make sense of it and try to make it sound somewhat normal. So it was really an honor and I think over the course of my time on the show, uh, Billy really developed as a human being. Uh, and so I would do certain things uh, in terms of trying to get into what I call Billy, you know, and taking on the nerd and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but as a cast, I don't think we ever really did anything, but uh, yeah. I know it sort of answers your question, but not 100%. Sorry. Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, just first off, I have to say you were always my favorite ranger growing up. Oh, you're um, sweet. Thank you. Yeah, we always fought over who got to be Billy when we played on the playground. Oh, wow. But part of that whole um, playing on the playground, what was so fun was the dinosaur piece of Power Rangers. Right. So I'm curious, were you a dinosaur fan as a kid growing up? And if, uh, if so, you know, how much 
Sure. I mean, I can remember I lived in Denver, Colorado when I was around seven years old. And they have, I don't know what museum it was, but we took a field trip. And I can remember the first time that I saw dinosaur fossils. And I was like, holy Toledo, you know, it was really uh, exciting. Or what city are we in? Raleigh. 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 Holy <laughs> Raleigh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I was a huge dinosaur uh, fan growing up. I actually did like the Tyrannosaurus. Uh, <laughs> I think that was sort of my favorite. I know Triceratops was probably by far my second. Um, but I was always, I always had a fascination with it. But um, so it was really cool when we got this TV show and the producers are trying to describe all the elements that go into Power Rangers. You're teenagers with attitude. <laughs> You're superheroes. You get your powers from this talking head. And, uh, and you're also, your powers come from dinosaurs. So it's just like this huge mix of everything. Couldn't quite understand it, but the fact that there was dinosaurs added in there was kind of cool. Until we filmed the original pilot, and I don't know if any of you have seen yeah, the unedited yes, pilot. I, have, yeah. I mean, it's pretty weird. Yeah. And so like when we morphed, our face literally morphed into our dinosaur. That was weird, I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. But like we're standing there and it's like all of a sudden I become a triceratops. <laughs> Thankfully, they cut that out of the, the regular show. But so, once I saw that, I was like, "Oh, I don't know if this dinosaur thing is really going to work." <laughs> but uh, yeah, but it was cool. So, does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Hey, David. Uh, my name is William. I'm a huge fan ever since I was a kid. Uh, question: With the Japanese counterpart, the Super Sentai Zoo Ranger, um, did you ever meet any of the characters from there, including the original Rita Repulsa? No. no. Uh, I don't. What one dollar? I. We didn't until we started doing Comic Cons. Uh, I never met the original Rita Repulsa. I believe she passed away in 2006. Hey, 2006, yeah. So, uh, no. But I've met the red, the pink, and the yellow. So, um, those are the three that I, I've met from uh, the Super Sentai series. But, yeah, I haven't got to meet all of them. And, uh, you know, their show is totally different than ours. Uh, we never watched it going into our, our show. Uh, at some point, probably halfway through season one, the producers had like a party and we, we watched a couple of episodes of their series and we're like, oh, wow, it's dark. It's really scary. So it's, it's always fascinating to me, uh, Heim Saban, who's the creator of the American version of Power Rangers, like whatever he saw in Super Sentai and how he got the idea, oh, I'm gonna make this a kid's show, is beyond me. So uh, good for him. That might be wrong. it's metal, it's okay. Cause I mean, he's not that good of a guy, but uh, good for him on having a creative vision. Hi, I'm Morgan. Hi. I was curious if you had any like fun stories or memories from behind the scenes with the cast members. Uh, not really. They were a bunch of jerks. <laughs> uh, of course. I mean, we had a lot of fun on the set. Um, I mean, we worked 12 to 15 hour days, so long days, and. Uh, kind of have to laugh a lot as much as possible. So, um, I don't know, I mean, Jason Frank probably is the biggest prankster out of everybody, but I do, yeah. one of the funniest stories, I think, and I, I've sort of told it a few times, is that um, Catherine Sutherland, who came in to be the second Pink Ranger, uh, this poor girl, she's flown from Australia and uh, doesn't know anybody, and she has to show up the set on a very established, popular TV show and sort of step into huge shoes to film. And on her first day, uh, she went to film a scene and Bulk and Skull, uh, Jason Narvey and Paul Schreier took all of the furniture out of her dressing room <laughs> and hid it. And so when she came back, she was like, uh, <laughs> all my furniture's gone. And so everybody got a big laugh out of it. And then she went and she filmed another scene. And then when she came back from that, they put tons of furniture in her dressing room. <laughs> And then she couldn't even open her door and was like, oh, you know, like, what did I get myself into? Is this what it's going to be like? All oh, these people are horrible. Americans are so mean. <laughs> so, but I just thought that was funny. It's not obviously funny for Catherine, but uh, it was hilarious. So that's like one of the, the more funny stories that I can remember. But, um, you know, Jason Frank, just always playing pranks. He's a very funny, very witty, very off the cuff person. Uh, and so, I don't know. He stuck a fly in a sandwich once. I haven't told that story in a few years. But, uh, and I ate it. And, uh, I didn't know I ate it until after the fact. 
So that's funny. <laughs> he was my best friend. Was. In, in theory, yeah, in theory, no. But it kind of was, it's not funny, but it was funny. I don't know how to explain it, but he would do stuff like that. <laughs> I was just wondering what your favorite scene and line from the show was. Oh out my of gosh. all the scenes. I don't know if, okay. I mean, my favorite line, is probably the only one I really remember, is a fully sentient, multifunctional automaton. How prodigious. That's what I remember. <laughs> never left me. So, uh, so that, and I don't know about my favorite scene, um, there's so many, because I did like 200 episodes and there were so many great little memorable scenes. Um, I think funny wise for me, it won't be funny for you guys because you weren't there, but uh, we had an episode uh, where Trini had an uncle, Uncle Howard, and uh, the guy that played Uncle Howard, for whatever reason, couldn't, he had like five lines and he couldn't, <laughs> Couldn't get the lines. And we did take after take after take. And they were like, the producers were going crazy, the cameraman's going crazy, and we just had to keep doing take. And then finally, I don't know, they just, they were laughing so hard, and this is gonna get gross. Bring it on! Okay. <laughs> so anyways, everybody's starting to laugh so hard. I feel so bad for this guy, because in a sense we were laughing at him, but it was just becoming so ridiculous that he couldn't get these lines, and we were all laughing. And the guy that sits on the camera, behind the camera guy, he was laughing so hard that he farted. <laughs> <laughs> really loud. <laughs> and, um, oh my gosh. And the poor guy. But when you go and watch the episode, uh, they had to dub that guy's voice because it was such a mess that they had to bring in a voice actor and just clean it up. So, poor guy. I don't know if he continued acting after that or not. But, uh, that's one of the scenes that is memorable in so many ways. Yes. Hi, David. Hi. Uh, did you have any uh, martial arts experience before starting to work on the show, or were you learning it along with your character? Uh, I was a competitive gymnast most of my life, so that's sort of what, in essence, helped me get the role, because uh, I had that physical ability, like Amy Jo was a competitive gymnast most of her <laughs> life. So once we became cast in the show, uh, they taught us television martial arts. Uh, you know, because you have to do things differently for camera than would be a normal punch or a normal kick. So it was just learning to do things. And then in the beginning, uh, they didn't want Billy to know how to fight or be able to fight. Um, we rehearsed for like a month, and I kind of got pretty good at fighting. And I remember Haim Saban, the creator of the show, came in, and we had to do like a little thing for him. And he saw that I was fighting good, and he lost his caca and um, got really upset and said, no, this is not what that character does. Uh, this character doesn't know how to fight. I don't want to see this. I don't ever want to see it again. I was freaking out because I'm a young actor and I just, am I going to get fired? What did I do? Kind of thing. And so I just stepped back and just sort of let Billy guide me in terms of when I could fight. And so what you're saying is sort of correct. I learned how to fight as Billy learned how to fight. So that's how that came about. Yes. Hey, um, I was wondering, so late in your uh, tenure as a Power Ranger, you stopped being a Power Ranger. Uh, you were kind of on tech support, for lack of a better term. You were everyone else tech support. support. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering, was that the natural course of the story? Was that always the plan to have Billy kind of take a back role? Or was that kind of, they knew you were going to leave, and so they're kind of using that to write you out the show? Uh, they certainly didn't know I was going to leave, no. Um, and... That's a very uh, complicated question. The 90s were a different time. There were certain rumors about me going around and uh, my sexuality, and that potentially could have damaged the TV show if that got out. And so it was best. You couldn't have like a lead character, a lead actor that was gay, uh, representing superheroes in a children's market. Uh, so I believe Allegedly, that's why I was demoted to technical advisor. So that's sort of the answer to that question. Hey, David. Hey. Um, so a popular fan theory is that um, you were the Phantom Ranger of Wolf Billy. Um, 
Do you think that's feasible or possible that after he left Aquatar, he could have made the Phantom Ranger powers and that he made um, Eclipter as a robot and that it was your job to stop him and you gave like the Turbo Rangers their new Megazord after um, the original cast left? Well, I will say this. Uh, Billy did have a flying car. <laughs> Billy did create the communicators. So Billy could have done all those things that you just said. Next. <laughs> hey, David. Um, my question is, have you watched any of the series that came after yours? Because you were the first Blue Ranger, um, have you watched your legacy at all? And if so, who is your favorite Blue Ranger who has replaced you? Well, nobody just replaced me. <laughs> just so we're clear. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just teasing. I'm giving you guys a hard time. So, uh, you know, I haven't really watched... I mean, there's so many incarnations now of Power Rangers. I haven't really watched any. I've met a ton of actors. They're all super nice. They're all very talented, very charming people. Um, Blue Ranger-wise, uh, I don't know. They're, I'm sure they're all good for different reasons. Um, I do I do like, um, I don't know. I don't want to say it because then if I don't say somebody else's name, they're going to be like, well, what's up with that? <laughs> so I like them all, sorry. And uh, that's such a general answer, but yeah, I don't want to act like, I, I, I don't like Power Rangers for me. Power Rangers don't choose. So when I see this, who's your favorite? Who's this? Who's that? I don't like that. That doesn't feel very Power Rangery to me. I mean, Power Rangers are a team. And so we support each other for our good qualities and bad qualities. We lift each other up. And that's that's what I want it to be about. I don't like all this, like, this guy's better, that guy's better. That doesn't feel right to me. Only me. And uh, so, you know, I, I support all the Power Rangers and all the actors that have played Power Rangers because I know each character brings something for you guys out there or the younger fans now that they can identify with certain people and feel good about themselves. And that's that's really what I want. Are you recording, um, Are you recording uh, this? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> my name is uh, Ben. Um, I, I have a... Sorry. You're totally fine. Yeah. My name is Ben. Uh, I have a question. Um, like in the 2017 uh, movie, and as a person with autism, uh, do you think Billy in the show has autism? In the TV show? Yes. I don't. I don't think so. Um, but I'm not. I'm not a closed book to it. It's it's certainly possible because of his intelligence level, and uh, his his struggle sometimes to communicate with people certainly could lead to that. But me as the actor playing Billy, I don't. I don't think he was autistic. I think he was just. He's just light years ahead of most of us. That's all. Sorry. No, you can totally. I wanted you to record it. I just couldn't see your face because you were covering it. That's all. Okay. Okay. Well, here's here's my face. I, I like I like your face. It's a good face. Hi. Power Rangers were some of my favorite memories growing up. So just thank you for that, first of all. And my question is, I didn't see the Power Rangers reboot movie because I'm kind of scared to, <laughs> frankly. Uh, and I just saw that they're rebooting it again. So. You claim that you're too old, but uh, with Jason David Frank still being completely bringing the energy, and do, do you think they'll ever reboot it with the original cast as much as possible? I don't know. I mean, I, I would hope that Hasbro would would listen more uh, <laughs> than Saban. I mean, Saban just refused. I think there's they really want to push as. I guess they should, I don't know. But you know, this is gonna come off very egotistical, so I'm sorry if I insult anybody on any level. It's not the, it's not the goal. But the original cast is what sells Power Rangers. Uh, yep. And I mean, still to this day, those are the toys that sell the most. No matter how many toys they try to introduce, the toys sell, but when you put the original toys out, they really sell. And so <laughs> I just wish you know, people would listen to that, or Hasbro would listen to that, or Saban would have listened to that, and just, you know, like with the 2017 movie, they were foolish not to bring the original cast back, because it really would have brought the fan base in more to see the movie, and would have made you guys happy. I'm not saying we had to play the Rangers, I don't believe that at all, 
but what they did to Jason Frank and what they did to Amy, Amy Jo Johnson was disgraceful. Uh, I think it's an insult to who they are and to the franchise. Uh, the fact that they can't even say a line and they're just at the end of the movie holding up their phones, taking selfies, I think is really insane. Uh, so, you know, I wish they would listen to you guys and uh, maybe do something with the original cast. Uh, I don't know how this new reboot is gonna go out. I don't think that they would cast us as Rangers um, personally, and I don't, I don't think that they need to. Um, but again, like my character can have Ranger-esque qualities if I'm in space and I'm a commander and maybe I have my own group of Rangers. Same with Jason Frank. If Tommy has gone on and done all these other things, you know, he can be a Ranger in disguise. I mean, there's ways to do it, but to be the the actual uh, Rangers, I don't think is a realistic thing for us to be. And not because we're old. Because <laughs> I, I really think, knowing everybody in the original cast, I know we can still bring it. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, yeah! yeah. yeah. Woo. yeah. <laughs> such strong chemistry together. And I will say uh, that Amy Jo and I are still amazing friends to this day. We were just vacationing together last week on Cape Cod. Uh, we hang out all the time. So it uh, doesn't mean I like working with her. <laughs> but she's one, of, she's one of my best friends. <laughs> uh, and Jason Frank and I were really good friends as well. And so I, I, I relate to them the most. I spent more time outside of Power Rangers with them the most. Um, so I would say, in, in essence, those two. Um, but you know, I love Walter, I love Austin, Twee, uh, who's passed on, and everybody else. Jason Narvey, Paul Schreier, um, Ernie, who's passed on as well, which is unfortunate. But uh, you know, everybody was great to work with. But I just related most with Jason and with Amy Jo. And I also have a request. Oh. I'm pretty sure it's a request of the fans. That I'm not like doing it, dude. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I would like to hear you say, you know, your line, Triceratops. Okay. Maybe uh, at the end. I, not maybe. I will at the very end. Okay. Okay. Thank Woo. you. <clears throat> hey there. Hey. So my question is, um, so Billy, you know, he has a lot of different lords throughout the series. Uh, Triceratops, Unicorn, um, you know, the wolf. Which one? I mean, obviously, again, uh, Triceratops will always have the best place in my heart, uh, just because it's the one I relate to the most, and I think was the one that really solidified the series. Um, the unicorn, a little weird. <laughs> I'm not against it, just not my favorite. Uh, the wolf was pretty cool, very cool, actually. I like the wolf a lot, but it just doesn't hold the same value to me as the Triceratops. Hello. Um, so, thanks to the DVDs, actually, we get to see a lot of special features and behind the scenes of a lot of the cast. Um, one I kind of truly appreciate and I didn't realize when you were filming was the stunt people and how much they're not credited to their stunts and what they do and how many you didn't have on set. Like everyone thinks, you know, you have a thousand putties you have to fight and they're like, really, it's only three. <laughs> or putties? Kind of, yeah, putties, yeah. They're there. So, just thoughts, stories, whatever, on the stunt actors and just shout out. I mean, yeah, I, I think it's unfortunate, and I forget too, I'm so bad about this. You know, our stunt team made us look so good, and they really do go above and beyond. Uh, our stunt team would double as putties and as the rangers. So if you would see the white ranger fighting putties, in theory, some of the people that were in the putty outfits were also the stunt person for the blue, the black, the red, whatever, rangers. So yeah, I mean, there wasn't a lot of putties. Uh, in theory, I think our stunt team composed of maybe seven to ten people, and uh, they made us look good. And you know, we live in California, and we have hundred degree hundred degree days often. And they would be out there in those basically wetsuits, just fighting 
and fighting and fighting and making us look good. So I uh, commend them all because you know they were on a non-union show that didn't have a lot of protections for them. So I really, really appreciate them. So thank you for bringing that up. Clap for the sub people. I'm a professional, sir. <laughs> I don't get injured. So, uh, no, I never had any injuries. And I don't think, I mean, Twee did get injured. She hurt her knee at some point. But in general, uh, the only people that got hurt were the stunt people. So, um, what's going on? Are we having an issue? Getting me back in here. Oh, okay. Uh, so, the stunt people were the only ones that really got injured because we maybe kicked them or accidentally hit them and stuff like that, so. Oh, so my question was already asked, so I was struggling to come up with one. So uh, <laughs> in the show, you wear glasses the whole entire time. So when you actually get into your morphing suit and everything, does your eyesight get, like, changed? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> you don't think, like, inside the blue visor, uh, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know because when we would be in the command center in our suits, take our helmets off, I didn't have glasses on. So in those moments, I must have seen perfect. <laughs> it, was, it was one of those gray areas that never made sense. And uh, I guess, yeah, it's just, it's weird though that Billy didn't have his glasses on underneath the hood. So, or mask, helmet, whatever it is, not the hood. All right, we got to pack for just a couple more questions. Okay. Hello, sir. My name's Hi. Adam. Hi, Adam. Uh, my question is, the Power Rangers movie with Ivan Ooze. Yes. Uh, you lose, you lose. <laughs> one, of my fun, one of my favorite movies of all time. I like that. Yeah. Uh, my question is, how was it like to actually work alongside Ivan Ooze? Because uh, I like the actor himself. He was a, this hilarious on the screen. So how was he like behind the screen, and thank you. Well, Paul Freeman, he's like a super, super talented actor. And so it was such a huge honor for all of us to get to work with somebody that was as committed of an actor as he was. So uh, he really made us sort of step up our game. And I just remember the first scene that we filmed with him was the one where he says, oh, where's my autograph book? <laughs> and uh, I mean, it was just so awesome to watch him uh, do that scene. It was so much fun to film that scene with him. So he was a true, true actor, and we learned so much from him, and uh, just super fun to work with behind the scenes. I mean, obviously, we had to be scared of him, sort of. Power Rangers don't get really scared, but, you know, we had to make sure, how do we defeat this guy? So, does that sort of answer your question? Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All the way at the very back. David, hi, I'm, I'm Rachel. Um, <clears throat> my brothers and I grew up with you guys, and, and my kids grew up with you all, and I didn't have a question, I just wanted to say that we love you and you're just so strong and such a great inspiration, you know. Oh, you're, you're very well, sweet. Thank, thank you. you. It's so wonderful to see you. Thank you. And what a good mom <laughs> to introduce your children <laughs> to the original Power Rangers. Were you maybe kind of like 
a favorite dinosaur that you wish you had gotten? Like maybe you're in the trailer and you're like going, Velociraptor, Stegosaurus. <laughs> Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I do remember being fascinated, too, with stegosauruses when I was little. But, uh, no, I mean, the triceratops for me is pretty cool just because the horns, I guess. I don't know. They just seem like really weird creatures to me. And I, I would really be curious to see what it was really like to live in the dinosaur times. But, uh, no, I wouldn't want any other, nothing else. Triceratops all the way. So, uh, you asked me to say triceratops, right? I just said it. <laughs> Like Krispy Kreme, Triceratops. Krispy Kreme, Triceratops. That's not what you want? I have to call it out? The way you said it in the show. The way you said it in the show. Now, the question is, do I, have, do I have to blink my eyes like I do in the morphing sequence? Like, Triceratops. I'm just doing this once, and I can't do it and hold the mic at the same time, so... Well, I can. I'm just... Triceratops! Oh, you gotta... Ah! Oh, you guys are recording this? It's so embarrassing, right? Are you ready? You recording? Triceratops! Is that good?